I, I sat down and over a period of a couple of weeks, I thought of the idea of survival research labs. And that idea is that uh, taking technologies that, are, that typically have a practical value or, a, or like a kind of a, a militaristic value, uh, a, a, a something where you know they, they, they play a part they played a part in society where they were used to create profits for typically for like corporations not really individuals or or uh, or project power for the military to take those kind of technologies and turn take the take the power and the force of those technologies and turn them towards something very impractical but still retain the, the intensity of it uh, and do it in a theatrical context which is to say a real-time context, which is, you know, which really pushes the point of, uh, and, and really the issue with, this, with doing anything technical, is that it just, uh, you know, just, you know, technology is basically about finding the long way around to solving a problem. It always has been. It's a lot simpler to just take a stone and sharpen it and like, you know, eat your food and, you know, maybe not even cook it, you know, I mean, that's the easy way to do stuff, but people just aren't like that. And I'm one of those people who really aren't like that. I really like the long way around. And so Surviving Research Laboratories is about taking, not just taking the long way around, by trying to do things and, and try to adapt and use technologies to solve a problem, but it's about taking the longer, long way around, which is to say that, uh, it's not, you don't do it for any kind of practical reason. Uh, even the problems that are solved under the auspices of SRL are just all artificial problems and really uh, pointless problems. And that's, I guess that's, I guess that's why I get confused as an artist sometimes because there's that, there's that uh, emphasis on senselessness. That's, uh, that's part of the process at SRL. Uh, but in any case, we do these performances. I guess we've done about, oh, I don't know, about 60 of them so far. And uh, the performances are organized around a theme. It's much like, you know, it's a very typical theatrical kind of thing. They're organized around a theme, especially the larger ones, sometimes very elaborate themes with sets and props and, uh, uh, you know, I rate them in tonnage. A large show would be about a, may 70 or 80 tons of robots. A smaller show, like the show that we did out here when we closed the street down October 30th, was about 15 tons. So it was about 15 tons of robots. But uh, the shows are, they're, they're staged in a way to, uh, to, uh, to sort of, you know, you don't have language in the show, so you're basically, you're basically connecting a bunch of uh, visual sight gags that are created with the machines. And so it's basically a comedy act. I like to think of it as a comedy act. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you, and, you know, to, to give an example, uh, you know, we were out here, we closed the street down, uh, you know, the, the show here, the group show that this was part of was called Mad Science. And I said, Mad Science, how about Angry Mad Science? <laughs> and so the, the title of the show was, uh, uh, an explosion of ungovernable rage because it just seemed, you know, I mean, it's it's kind of in the air, right? Everyone's mad about something, right? Something to be mad about, you know. People are mad because they're not busy enough. People are mad because they don't have the imagination to think of anything else to do. So, and some people are just mad <laughs> because you get to a point in life where some people seem to get to the point in life where they just are mad all the time. So, we we did a show about the angry mad science. And uh, so we had a bunch of machines, and you know they were kind of expressing various levels of anger. But on uh, on a lighter note, uh, you know it was a bunch of different scenarios that were all connected together because they happened simultaneously. But also because there was like uh, you know there was it, was it was staged to like come across uh, and create a set of visual images. Like for instance, we had one machine that had mounted on it uh, a bunch of a humanoid figure all made from mummified coyotes. And uh, the spine robot uh, was fighting over that with a robot that Karen Marcello here was operating and had programmed, which was like a large industrial robot that was trying to beat it with a baseball bat. The $60,000 robot trying to beat coyotes with a baseball bat is kind of a certain sense of irony around that. That uh, I don't know if it was lost in the audience or not, but I love it. 
this set of images was that we had the spine robot, which is a very kind of an organic robot, and it was grabbing, it was doing the heavy lifting, it was grabbing the coyotes and throwing them into the, towards the audience. And to get to the point, of, to get to the humor part, I'll just remember, I was in the, you know, I was operating that for most of the show, grabbed a, grabbed a coyote, threw it towards the audience, and I saw it land in a puddle and splash this like 13 year old girl. <laughs> And it splashed this muddy water all over her, and she just looked horrified at first, and then she just started laughing. <laughs> and I know that that little girl is never going to forget, forget that. that. Yeah. Probably, maybe on her dying deathbed a hundred years from now, she'll, she'll be going off into the netherworld, and she'll remember the coyote that splashed with muddy water. And that's really the point. That gets to the real point of what this is all about, to create these kind of memorable things. Uh, but the, uh, the focus of it, or the, the way that we do this, the way that, the way that this kind of lowbrow sort of set of visual gags and stuff is created, is, uh, you know, the, the backdrop to it, even though a lot of people say it's really insipid and kind of ridiculous and childish, juvenile, I've been called many things. These shows have been characterized in all kinds of ways that uh, I think are great, but other people maybe were trying to put them down, but, but you know, uh, uh, there is a very serious underpinning to the whole thing, and that is what it takes to actually get it done. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that tonight, a little bit about the blessings and the wonders and the curses of doing that. Now, uh, I'm going to show you, I'm going to show, I've got videos from a couple of shows here, I'm just going to talk for a second more, then we're going to do a quick tour of my shop, which you can see some of the kinds of equipment that's used. But uh, I came to the conclusion uh, years ago when I was a teenager, when I was like a budding scientist, was, was great in, you know, doing great in my mathematics, you know, in algebra, and I was like going to be a scientist. And then I got progressive, progressive politicized, and I decided to be a left-wing radical instead. And uh, as in my vision, I felt that... Uh, my, you know, I, I felt I was a pretty smart guy, and talented guy, and I was like, you know what, I'm not going to end up being some artist and working for the military or, or like working for some big corporate slags who were like sucking all the money. You know, I was like, no way, you know. I'm going to go into the humanities, so that's what I did. You know, I was about uh, 15, and I just left the whole, I made a conscious decision to stop taking math classes and take psychology classes and take art classes. And I continue on that trajectory uh, ever since then. But I did have, have always had a very, uh, you know, a very clear pull towards the technical. And I always loved like, you know, space travel and all this stuff. So I have like a, I've romanticized the scientific part of it. And with SRL, I was finally able to uh, kind of resolve the, the discrepancies between loving the technologies but hating really really being repelled by what it typically got used for and that's and that's how that's how it, it ended up that's that's why it's not a real contradiction that that uh, to be using this kind of stuff and and the technologies we use at SRL are like contemporary technologies like any advanced prototyping lab would be using the same stuff we use the same development software that like any big laboratory would use. You know, we use the same machine tools. Uh, all that ends up being that that the, the the practical repercussions of that are that you create these things that are so complicated and convoluted and so amazing that you want to keep them all. Because I tell you what, no one's ever tried to buy any of them. So I'm one of those artists that has had the that has had the, the the privilege of being able to keep all of their art. But that means you've got to store it. So I've got about 180 tons of baggage, if you will. Uh, but a lot of that is like fancy equipped fast forward. This is where we took a a nice sixty thousand dollar industrial robot, armored it, and uh, Karen and unleashed Karen Marcello on it, who is like a famous programmer, software engineer from the Bay Area who devotes much of her time to ridiculous things at uh, SRL. <laughs> but uh, I should, you know, basically what she did is she wrote a bunch of programs for this 
and then was switching them on the fly during the show. <laughs> so this is trying to figure out... Normally robots, you don't ever want an industrial robot to hit anything. And so you have to adjust them. You have to figure out... We had to figure out... My kid. <laughs> how to get a robot to be able to hit something without shutting itself down. And the reason to go with a, the reason to go with a baseball bat was because it seemed to me the most brutal and crude uh, and debasing thing you could do to a fancy robot like that. Which was <laughs> just to give it a club and have it smash. <laughs> I mean, it just seemed like you know this uh, a real nice caveman thing to do. Here we're practicing on some mummies here, but uh, this was. Uh, the rectilinear kind of thing and this is the spine row here which is it's got a little bit of scoliosis we kind of had to do a really kind of jerry jury rig kind of a uh thing for the uh museum here where we just got it to run good enough to use in this show here and uh but it worked it got it was able to pull the coyotes off and stuff like that just fine and i'm gonna go find it here we can find it doing something here Thing mostly we've got so cool. the robot. Well, you got the. This is the running machine here. I think Karen Marcel is destroying a robot here soon with the. There you go. moving it. How many centimeters a minute does it move? It move each axis moves a degree or uh, 270 degrees per second. Per second. So wow. you would never be able to get out of the way of it.